today on Dr. Phil. What would you do if your husband cheated? Darcy confronted me and this girl. Some women get mad. I went and got the phone book and I hit her over the head with it. And some. Whose side did you take? I left with the other girl. Get even. You still talk to the guy you had the affair with? Well, I don't think it was an affair. If you all got together and you dropped the linen and start grinning, that's an affair. <laughs> Let's do it. If we're going to do something here that matters, then we got to deal with the truth. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, three, take it. This is going to be a changing day in your life. What would you do if your husband cheated? Would you get divorced or would you get even? Now, right, Darcy, it, Darcy's here. She said she caught her husband cheating. In fact, she caught him more than once. Did she file papers on him? No. She got even. She had an affair of her own. Take a look. John has trouble with infidelity, and because of the infidelity, I don't trust him. I am broken. The first time I found out that he cheated, I went home to visit my parents. And when I came back home, my friend explained to me that she had heard John having sex upstairs when I was away. Darcy actually came into my place of work, confronted me and this girl in the middle of work. It was a bad, bad situation. <laughs> Darcy and I got past it by her taking me back. One time I was in the trunk of my car and I found John's clothes on several of the shirts was hair. I realized that he was cheating for the second time. You could say I got sloppy with the things that I was doing outside of our relationship. I, I just didn't care anymore. I have so much resentment towards him. I was fed up with the cheating. I was fed up with our marriage. And I was done. I met somebody and we became friends. One night, she ended up going to this guy's house. I followed her there and saw them having sex. I was angry, devastated. I just I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I didn't feel justified. You got away with it twice. I felt like it was my turn. Well, when Darcy came face to face with a woman who had been with her husband, things got, well, they got real ugly real fast. One time, I got home, and the girl that John was cheating on me with was there. She was calling me names ended into a bad physical altercation. Darcy went into the house, came back out with a telephone book, and Darcy swung the telephone book. And I hit her over the head with it. I had to come running in and try to get between them and, and separate them. Several neighbors came out and witnessed it. I was embarrassed. The girl I was having an affair with wanted to press charges against my wife. She wanted to go to the police station, so we did. John took her side. Which makes me feel horrible. An officer came in and told me that I was under arrest for spousal abuse. Somehow I ended up being the one that was in jail. Well, John says he wants to save the marriage and says he's willing to do whatever it takes. But Darcy proposed an open marriage. I did. Define that for me. What would you, how would this play out? How would this work? I thought maybe we could stay together and have uh, relationships outside. So stay married and, and live together, but you could date other people. Yes. Sleep with other people. Yes. If you were going to do that, why be married at all? Why not just be single and then you can date anybody you want? Because he wanted to stay married. So this was a compromise for him. I'll stay with you, sort of. OK, I, I think I got it. Um, you've cheated how many times? Twice. Been caught both times? Yeah. So you're not very good at it? No. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, you're just not very good at it. Did you want to get caught? Uh, definitely not the first time. Yeah. So tell me about this first girl you cheated with. What? What was it that was so magnetic about her that you just had to be with her and, instead of your, your I, wife? I don't, I don't know that there was anything magnetic there. I, I think, you know, that was a spur of the moment bad decision. Yeah, I don't know, probably some unhappiness at home, too. That's fairly well documented between Darcy and I that it hasn't been rosy. Because I just had a baby. But the I... baby you had was his. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, 
And how many children do you have? Two. Both with him? Yeah. Okay. So you get her pregnant, and so she starts changing and expanding and being pregnant, and so you lose interest in her. I mean, look, let's just be honest. I mean, you can put a spin on this and put a face on this, and I'll tell you where you're going to wind up. If, if you two come in here and do that, and you try to think, okay, that's a tough question. I better be careful how I answer this. Then you're going to wind up divorced because you got one foot in the courthouse right now. I was miserable. Yeah, I was miserable. Right. And you thought you would fix that by sleeping with someone that you weren't particularly attracted to. Now, well, never said it was a uh, wise decision. Well, I get it's really hard to take back stupid. You know, <laughs> when you do something really stupid, it's hard to unring that bell, isn't it? Yeah. And you, you admit that was a stupid thing to do. Yeah, no right? doubt. Where did you do this? Uh, in my bed. In our house. In your house, in your bed. Uh huh. Did I understand that the neighbors are who told you? My friend, you? yeah, she lived downstairs, told me. So she could hear you? Yeah, apparently. What'd you say to him when you found out? Well, I called him and I was like, you know, I busted you, just come clean. And it took him a while to admit it, but he did. Went and got my car when I saw the girl. And is she the one you hit in the head with the phone book? No, that's the second one. That was the second one. <laughs> okay. And tell me again why you hit her in the head with the phone book? Because I called her mother to let her know what her daughter was doing with my husband, because she was only 22. And um, she didn't believe me where I got her phone number from. She said I was stalking her. I said, no, I got it out of the phone book. And she said, no, you didn't. So I went and got the phone book. And I showed her. Okay, she didn't believe where you got the number. Yeah. So you hit her in the head with a well, phone no. book. <laughs> no, 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 no. I went and got the phone book. I showed her that her number was in the phone book. I see. And then she started calling me crazy, and then I hit her over the head with the phone book. To prove that she was right. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you want to see crazy? No, I would just wanted to prove that the phone number was in the phone book. Yeah. I, she really needed to get it in there. <laughs> I did. Yeah, so how does, as we talk about this, how does this all sound to you? I, it still sounds horrible to me. I mean, that, it's good and fine to laugh about that now, but like, I, that was a bad, bad night that night. I mean, it was bad. I mean, I, I, I ended up in jail that night for crying out loud, you know, for doing nothing and trying to break up the craziness wasn't my fault, that was though. going in front of my daughter was watching for crying out loud. It was no, bad. Now, wait a minute. Are you, are you criticizing how she handled your infidelity? No, no. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, whose side did you take in, in that dispute? Well, after it was all said and done, I, I left with the other girl. She wanted to go to the police. Uh, and, I, and I went with her. So you went with the the girl you were cheating with to the police station to get them on to her for hitting her in the head with a phone book yeah wow okay so um how'd you feel about that so he's de he gets in the car with her and he leaves and yeah, he goes down so to the police he left station me and the girls to deal with that well which he had already left you know you deal with all this other stuff by myself. Wow. Okay, we're going to take a break. Darcy shows how she spied on John when we come back and also what she discovered. We'll be right back. There were numerous ways that I found out about John cheating. She has called friends and family and things of that nature to double check stories that I've told her. I kind of wish I knew the whole truth and I don't think I ever will. I'm here with Darcy and she admits having an affair with another man, but she says it was only after she confirmed that her husband John had cheated first. Now, Darcy suspected John for years. She was snooping through his emails, even checking his clothes for signs of an affair. Now, the real problem is she did find disturbing evidence. Take a look. There were numerous ways that I found out about John cheating. Computer, phone, text messages, emails. She has 
called friends and family and things of that nature to double check stories that I've told her. It drove me up a wall. I found emails from an adult website. I discovered John had a personal ad. There was a question on it that asked his favorite sexual experience. He said that it was with a girl on a balcony in Mexico. The problem with the story was that it wasn't me. There was no truth to it. That was that was me at trying to escape my reality and pretend something else was going on. Uh, when I confronted John, he said that it was just a joke between him and his friend. I do regret being so nosy. I kind of wish I knew the whole truth, and I don't think I ever will. So why did y'all get married, by the way? Well, we were happy. And then I made him move back to Pennsylvania, which was, you know, obviously the most horrible thing anybody could do. I made him move back to Pennsylvania, and he's pretty much hated me since. My sister was pregnant, and I wanted to be an aunt, and I wanted to be closer to family. And you didn't want to go? No. Did you resent her for that? Absolutely. Why'd you do it? Um, well, I, I, I didn't want to leave her, I mean, I, I wanted to be with her still, so I, she had her mind made up that she wanted to go, and then I, I relented. Yeah, and resented her for it. Did you use that to justify some of the things that you've done? Yeah. Oh, she's made me do this, so, yeah, absolutely. you know, she owes me, I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. I held on to that crutch for a long, long time. And so you decided that you would just get even. No, I, I didn't get even. I, that's not what I was trying to do. What were you trying to do? Be happy, have a little bit of happiness. Well, that's kind of getting even, right? I mean, if you don't get it from him, you'll get it from somewhere. I guess <clears throat> it was a little bit that way. And so did you seduce him? Did you go after him? I think I did a little. Mm -hmm. A little? Maybe a lot. <laughs> Well, we're being honest. Yeah, you decided, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. You just got after it. Well, no, it didn't start out that way. We're, like, we were just friends, and I guess it was flirting, and it felt good. This was a guy that was over at my house, too. Like, we went places together. Like, I hung out with this guy, too. Like, it was... Well, I also you? hung out with both the girls you cheated with, too. Did you forget that? No. So somebody that became your friend, too? I don't know about friend, but acquaintance, anyway, to hang out with, yeah. Well, how insensitive of you. <laughs> Do you really? Uh, tell me how you muster indignation over this. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I'm trying to understand, I really am, because I'm trying to figure out what buttons I need to push, what levers I need to pull to get you guys to snap out of this immature, ridiculous going back and forth like a couple of seventh grade kids. This isn't the lunchroom. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this isn't the lunchroom. You're not going behind the gym and kissing Susie and kissing Bobby. You have children involved here. Children who had no choice about whose wagon they hooked their star. They drew you two. And you're, you're running around like the Three Stooges here, like you have zero impulse control, and you just do what you do, and then afterwards you say, well, you know... And now you don't want to do this anymore. Now all of a sudden I want a new standard in our relationship, right? Yeah, that, I mean, that started way before I knew anything was going on with her. I mean, I've, I've become a much different person over the last couple of years, I'd like to think, and I thought it was good enough for her. But well, What was the trigger on this evolution that you've gone, what, what caused you to become a much better person? Hitting rock bottom. <laughs> and tell me rock bottom. I'm sleeping on a buddy's couch. I'm, I'm hating my life, and uh, I don't know, you just, uh, I, I woke up one morning and I, you just, you look around and say, what the crap am I doing here, you know? I don't want this, I don't want this life, I, I, want, I want my family, I want the things that I care about. Do you believe that he's turned over a new leaf? Do you believe he has a new attitude? Yeah, I do, but if the damage is done, mm -hmm. I love him. You love him, but? Yeah. But what? But I'm not as in love with him, and I don't. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do? I want to figure this out. I want to stop this. Mm -hmm. I want our kids to be happy. Do you trust him? No. Didn't have to think about that very long, did you? No. <laughs> you don't trust him. So you think what he's saying 
is that's how he feels now, but then it could happen again. It could happen again. Yeah. Do you trust her? A little. I did nothing for eight years. Nothing. I sat at home waiting for him for eight years and did nothing. Well, there would be like days where I wouldn't even see him. I'm not that guy anymore. I'm Doesn't not. matter. Eight years of damage. You can't make it up in two years. Is this a life sentence? It shouldn't be, but I don't know how to get past it. Do you want to? Yes. Why? Because I'm holding on to the past and I can't let it go. It sucks. I really think that I'm broken. I think he broke me. I feel really messed up. And you think that's a long-term problem? Uh, yes. So you just got you a ticket on the bitter bus, and so <laughs> you're just gonna just ride on through life. Just be pissed off from now on. But I don't want that. Well, I'd hate to be the next guy you take up with. Because they're whoever, if you got rid of him and you got with someone else, they're gonna pay for what he's done, aren't they? Yes. Because you're gonna look at them and say, yeah, I know what you guys do. Yeah, I don't trust anybody. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever be able to trust any man. So, there's the question. I mean, should they fight for their marriage? Or is it time to just say, look, this is over, come on. They beat each other up to the point that they just need to stop and move on. And sometimes that's an option. I want to tell you what I think when we come back. Darcy and John. Now, Darcy felt betrayed and really hurt by John's affairs. Well, then she did exactly the same thing. She cheated on him. Now, they're hanging on to this marriage by a thread, and so where are we here? You know, here's the danger for you. Let me tell you, let me, let me give you my assessment of him, okay? Would you like that? Yes. W would, you, would you like to know my assessment of you? <laughs> I don't think he does. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, one of the things that I am concerned about, and I'm going to tell you why she isn't feeling better about this. Everything you say about why you want to get back together is all about you. I'm hurting. I'm lonely. I'm on somebody's couch. I want to do this over. I don't like this anymore. It was fun when I was doing it, but now I don't like it. I've hit rock bottom. I need this. It's just me, 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 me. I felt like I walked into the damn opera. Me, 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 me. It's just all about you. And that does nothing for her. And so your risk here is that he's right. He doesn't have his wife. He doesn't have his kids. He doesn't have any of the things that he could feel secure about. And he wants to possess you again. He wants you to surrender to him again. He wants to feel like he's got you back again. And your risk is that once he does, he'll go, oh, okay. Now, let's see what else is out there. I got her back. <laughs> what a dummy. Uh, and that's a risk. That's a risk. And you have to acknowledge that. Have, have you seen anyone professionally about this? No, not one Have one. you gone to somebody and sat down and said, look, I need some professional help. Said, okay, what are your goals? And that's when you say, well, I'm extremely immature. I have no impulse control. I have no ability to predict the consequences of my actions. I have zero empathy because I don't understand what this does to my wife when I cheat on her. And then when there's a confrontation, I side with the other woman and leave her standing there. And somehow or another, there's something missing in my brain where I don't get that. And I need to get that. Can you help me with that? Have you gotten that kind of help? Have you had that kind of conversation with somebody like myself? Just now. Yeah. <laughs> um, because that's what, you know, I was in private practice for a long time. And I always listened. You know, when couples came in, I'd sit there and talk to them. And, you know, usually people go into marital therapy for like a long time. And I wasn't that way. I mean, because I would kind of figure this out at least in my view, in about 30 minutes. But I would listen for where their focus was. Your focus is all on you. You have not said one thing about how you've hurt her. You've not said one thing about how she is damaged. You have not said one thing about what you did to destroy the feelings, the confidence, and the worth of the mother of your children. Not one syllable, not one word. And that makes you a high-risk candidate because it tells me you don't even almost get it. 
Now, <laughs> you decide you're going to go hook up with some other old boy. You're a mother. You're a wife. You still flirting with this guy? No. You flirting with anybody else? No. She still talks to him all the time. You still talk to who? The guy you had the affair with? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think it was an affair. <laughs> Did y'all pull your pants down? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's an affair. Okay. Y'all got together, and you dropped the linen and start grinning. That's an affair. <laughs> okay. Be on. You've got to be honest with yourselves here. Come on. And you're still talking to this guy? Mm-hmm. You can't do that if this is going to work. Now, I'm going to tell you what it's going to take to have a chance to heal this. She is going to have to understand that you get it, that you get what it did when her husband, the father of her children, decided to go lay with someone else. While she was pregnant, while she was suffering with postpartum depression, while she needed you more than any other time in her life, you decided to go out and play footsie with some bimbo. That hurt her to the core, and she doesn't believe you get that. And you having an affair? Come on. That, that's not who you are. No. That is no. not who you are. You need to stop that. You need to take that off your list of possibilities. And you guys need to say, we're going to try to build this relationship based on something solid, based on trust. And you are going to have to forgive him. And forgiving him doesn't mean that what he did was OK. I completely forgave him for the first time. It's the second time that's killing me. I understand that. I get it. I, I, I really do. And you think that this only changes you as far as he is concerned, but that is not true. It changes you as a mother. Your children don't get 100% of who you are because a big part of you is walled off. You are hurt. You are stressed. You are tense. And they feel that, and they pay for that. Now, if you want to get a divorce from him, earn the right to get a divorce from him. Truly look at this maturely. Stop this running around sleeping with some guy. Stop, I mean, come on. You, we've already decided you're not very good at it, OK? <laughs> you're not going to get away with this. If that's what you want, then get a divorce now. But what you need to do is sit down and work through this. And I will find you someone that I will communicate with chapter and verse about what they need to do to sit down with you to see if this marriage can work or it cannot. If I make that arrangement for you in a very directed way, will the two of you do it? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, seriously Absolutely. do it. Yes. And, yes. You, you, and I hope you heard what I said, because I just gave you the keys to the kingdom, buddy. You hear what I said, do what I said, that will give you the chance you need. And if you don't, she will never, ever turn. She'll never, ever come back to you. I'm right about that, aren't I? Yes. I think about that and listen to what I have to say to another couple I'm going to talk to. Then I have a question for you guys. This other couple, you're going to meet a woman who says she felt destroyed when her husband cheated. Then she turned right around and guess what? She cheated on him. Now, so what do you suppose her husband did to get even? Good Lord, they must be tired. <laughs> we'll be right back. One particular weekend, I decided to go see an ex-boyfriend. She ends up visiting him, and they end up sleeping together. It was betrayal. You got what you deserved. Now, Callie says she was devastated when William cheated on her not once but twice. Callie then had an affair with her ex-boyfriend. And then William says he got back at her by cheating with her friend. So is this ever going to end? Take a look. Three months into our relationship, I had found out William was unfaithful with an exotic dancer. The only thing that I remember was going to the bar and then woke up the next morning with an exotic dancer next to me. Shortly after he apologized, I decided to stay. It pretty much set the precedence for the relationship. I'm really surprised that she did not walk away. Several years later, I had found out that he was unfaithful with a friend. This was somebody that I was very close with. She made me feel wanted. 
It was the piece of my relationship between Kelly and I that was missing. It's hard when you're cheated on once, but then when you're cheated on twice, you're feeling like you're never gonna get that trust back. One particular weekend, I decided to go see an ex-boyfriend, and William was not okay with it. He asked me not to go. She ends up visiting him, and they end up sleeping together. It was betrayal. It felt like she was getting paid back. It crossed my mind that, yes, you got what you deserved. But it didn't stop there, did it? Because you retaliated after her retaliation, right? Yes, sir. I retaliated by... Um, it wasn't full-blown out. It wasn't sexy. It wasn't... It was intimate relations. It, 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 it still it shouldn't have happened. Um, the reason that I did what I did is I, I, I felt betrayed. I, I, I felt the way that she did the first time that I cheated. I, I, it shouldn't have happened I, in our I, bed. That's... I, it shouldn't have happened in our bed. What she did shouldn't have happened in his bed with where his wife slept. You were making a, a point here that, yes, you had intimate relations with somebody in, in, in her bed, but it wasn't like sexy or romantic or se what, what, what? I received, I, a, I received oral sex. And she slept in my bed the whole and week while I was gone. What was your point? You know, I, I asked her not to sleep with him. I knew it was going to happen. It was an ex-boyfriend. She was going down there to console him. His wife had just, his wife had just died. And she was going down there to console him. Uh, they had been together a long time ago. Um, she had mentioned several times that they were soulmates. I need to make it the, known the, that during this point, we were separated. So the whole boyfriend thing, the ex-boyfriend thing, he knew about it. He was very clear on where I was going. Still, two wrongs don't make a right. You, you don't. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't. We were still sleeping in the same bed together. We were still in the same house together. Being separated yeah, means you're... Yeah, obviously, and then you bring another woman into my being, bed. Being separated means you're completely away from each other. You're not... I'm not... You, oh, you're full of baloney. You're not in the same house together. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so y'all are here to defend your behavior. No. No. No, because I, you, you, you're both defending what you did. You said, oh, we were separated. It was okay. No, 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 no. I was a single girl. I went down no. to see an old boyfriend, and so, we no. had, so it was no big deal. You're saying, hey, it, it wasn't that big a deal. I mean, we didn't, like, go all the way. No, it was a big deal. It was a very big no, deal. A very well, big why deal. are you defending it and contextualizing it for me? Seriously, is that how you want to spend your time with me? No. no. So you came here to defend this, not no. to change or reconcile anything? No. No, it needs to change. It needs to stop. Well, then why are we talking about defending it? I don't want to defend it. Did you guys listen to the conversation I, I was having here with, with these two? What did you take away from that conversation when I was talking to, to Darcy? To own up and, and be, a, be honest and be responsible for every action and what everything What do you think you about say? the choices they were making? Very bad. But do you think yours is better, worse, or different, or the same? Cheating is cheating. Infidelity is infidelity. It should have never happened. It should never happen. Your first infidelity that you know about was with a, a stripper? It was yeah, with right a after stripper. I had foot surgery. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. That was awesome. So you couldn't dance. Yeah, no. You had foot surgery. So you met a stripper, and you took her to a hotel room. Yes, yes, that's what happened. I, I honestly, I don't have a reason of why. I did what I did with the stripper. Um, I did call it off uh, the, that, that the very next morning uh, after we woke up in a hotel. Um, it, it's... We have been together for about about three months, and when you and the stripper? No. No, God, I hope not. <laughs> no, Callie and I have been together for about three months, and uh, I went down to Fort Worth. What is your point? Um, I guess I, I I don't have a point. You I don't, don't have, a, have point. a point because you said you woke up that next morning, and that first one was like, a, "Oops, I didn't mean to do this. I hate it when that happens." You know, it's just like, oh, man, I just, well, I was driving to Fort Worth. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in a hotel room with a stripper. I left. I just left right away, right? That's what you said. That's what I said. That's so that was just kind of an oops. Correct, sir. That's not what happened. What, what's not what happened? Uh, no, please don't tell me. I, <laughs> we'll be right back. The second time, you said you were really craving attention. Yes. The attention that we gave each other had almost ceased to stop. Um, 
as far as affection and attention. So you were craving attention? Yes, sir. So that's a yes? Yes, sir. Okay. After you did that, you felt sick about it? Yes. I, Physically I, sick about I, it? I actually, after the second, it, after it happened, yes, I, th I threw up and yeah. I got sick. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then the third time, the first one was an oops, the second one was you craved attention, but you threw up after, and the third time, which was only sort of sex, it was Clinton sex. No, it was... <laughs> I'm going to give you a break for a that minute. That was a good okay? answer. Nice stuff. I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to give you a break for a minute here. What the hell are you doing sleeping with somebody? Did you thought that was going to fix this in some way? No, because so why I'm did not you making excuses. Yes, I, I can feel already that you are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now why, did you, why did you decide to go have sex with somebody else? That's what? not me. I just... Because we weren't married at the time, and so... I don't know. You say whenever you have sex with him, these other images of these other women pop up in your head. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So you think you, you're in bed with him, but you then envision one of them being in bed with him. Yeah, because if we're having sex and if something new happens or something it always pops up did he do something with one of the other women you know the reason that things new happen is because we don't have sex maybe once a month once every two to three months it's because i don't trust you why would and you? so when when i when we do get to have sex i want it to be amazing i want it to be awesome as i can that's the only reason. Not, there, there's no. There's no no other reason than 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 that is because we don't have sex, which is true. So it's all pretty new. Sure. Pretty much. And so you're just trying to make it a memorable experience, <laughs> yes, thinking that she will want. <laughs> than to repeat this more frequently. That would be nice, yes, sir. I mean, that's yeah, your yeah, thinking, I, you know. I, I, I got to do a good job and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then, right? Yes, I'll, okay. I'll, yes. Yeah. But that's, back, that's backfiring because you're thinking, oh, he learned this from the oops. <laughs> it is, it is. He got this from the stripper. That, I mean, that's just it, something. It, yeah, so that's probably. what you think, you get paranoid that about that. I do get very paranoid. Okay, William says that Callie won't even hug him or touch him. I, I mean, is that, there's a real wall up here as there, well. Yeah, that is, yeah. And how, I, how does this look to you guys? I mean, is, is there's some similarities here, right? Yeah, you just said that. Does it seem self-destructive between the two of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. More so than it does between the two of you? I don't know about more so, but it, it definitely does. Yeah. All right, I, I got to take a break. Then I got a question for you. Callie says that she has a big reason for why she doesn't want to divorce William. And we're going to find out what that is when we come back. <laughs> William says he desperately wants to save his marriage to Callie, despite the fact they each admit to infidelity. And you know that. Look, people ask me all the time, can marriages survive infidelity? And the answer is yes, Th they can. Most don't because they don't do what I told these folks they need to do. Um, you guys have to understand that you're behaving in a very immature way. I mean, do you get that? Yes, you know, sir. When, when, you're, when I'm saying mature, I'm not trying to be insulting to you. I'm trying to be descriptive. Because when people are immature, they do what they want to in the moment without consideration for the consequences. And, you know, kids just do that. I mean, they don't get it. They say, you know, it feels good now, so I'll do it. But as, as people mature, then they begin to say, look, I have to look at immediate gratification and also have to look at the long-term consequences of that immediate gratification. And I've said this many times before, you don't ever solve problems within a relationship by turning away from your partner and going to somebody else. 
What's your real reason for not divorcing him? Be um, honest. It's because of our son. That's one of the reasons. But that's not the only reason you don't want to divorce him. You're also concerned. How many times have you been divorced? Twice. And how would your family feel? How would they react if you called over and said, well, I'm chalk up number three? <laughs> it would be pretty bad. And that really troubles you, true? Well, let me say something to you. And then I got something important I want to say to you. That is no reason not to get a divorce. I mean, your parents, your family, they can judge you, not judge you, whatever. But you got to do what is healthy and constructive for you. If, if you love your child, and I know you do, then you will take care of that child's mother. And you are not taking care of her now, are you? No. Because his mother is an emotional wreck about all of this. Yeah, pretty much. So you got to take care of his mother. And if that means getting a divorce, then that's what you need to do. Just as I said to them, I don't think you're even close to being ready. Now, I'll tell you, a lot of people in America right now say, guy cheats once, guy cheats twice, three times, that you know about, done, over. Right. You are a high-risk candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, you still in the military? Negative, sir. How many times did you do a tour in Iraq? Once, January 03 to 04, a year and a half. A year and a half. In the first part of the war. Mm -hmm. And I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. What have you done about that? Nothing, because uh, the VA only gave me 20%, and it doesn't allow me to go do anything. Mm -hmm. I have to have 30% to get onto the military post. You're very flat emotionally, true? Yes, sir. I don't want that for you. I don't like that for you. And I'm telling you, I'm not making excuses for him, but I have to confess something. I'm very biased on behalf of the men and women that stand up, step up, and go serve in our military to protect the rest of us in our way of life. And I very much appreciate... Uh, I very much appreciate... I very much appreciate what you've done in that regard, and you have my highest respect and, and gratitude for having done that. For you to have residual effects of that and nobody step up to assist you with that and leave you feeling the way you feel and dealing with what you deal with is not okay with me, and I'm stepping up for you right now, and I'm going to tell you we're going to get you the help with this PTSD. Thank you, sir. We're going to get you the help with this right now, and I'm going to set you up with what I believe to be the leading number one top expert in PTSD in the country. And I'm going to have you in front of them. I'm going to have you in front of them very, very soon. Yes, sir. Okay? I want you to let me work with him. I want the two of you to participate in that, and it's going to involve a significant marital component and a significant family component in, in terms of, uh, of your child. And through that process, I, I think we're going to see some ability to change here. I don't want you to stay married because you don't want your family to judge you, but I don't want you to get divorced at this point either. Let me work on this aspect of him. I know it sounds like I'm making an excuse for him. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just saying let's get this fixed so you've got a fully functioning guy that you can talk to and reason with about this relationship. This isn't your fault. It's nothing that you've done. But the, the, you say, we don't have sex much. I'm not very responsive. I've got walls up. That's very traumatic for you as well. And through this whole process, we're going to work on that. But I am absolutely unwilling to sit in judgment on his decisions when he has been through this and nobody has stepped up to help him. Give me a chance to do that, and then let's see where we go. Will you do that? Yes. He deserves that. He has earned that right. We'll be right back. I want you to go to our Dr. Phil Facebook page. Just click like so you can weigh in on this, or you can vote on drphil.com. If you caught your spouse cheating, would you be more likely to get even or get divorced? I want to thank all of our guests today. Guys, I, 
I, I believe, and you, you people in the audience or at home may disagree, but I really believe, in spite of the infidelity, that these are two relationships that can survive. I, I mean, I really do. I think both of them, if you met any one of these four individually, wouldn't you like them? I mean, and both of these, I mean, wouldn't you like these guys? They're nice guys. They're nice girls. But together, you come together in a toxic way. And we need to unravel that and give you a fresh start. You deserve it. Your children deserve it. So let us work on this, and then we'll follow up with you guys and see what's happening, okay? All right, be sure to check us out on drphil.com for more information, including links to all of our Dr. Phil resources. And don't forget, you can also find me on Facebook or tweeting on Twitter sometimes. Thanks for being here. So long.